Okay, let's do a real quick new airframe to program into the Imram Light V2 here. So, what you'll do is you say aircraft new, you give it a name, I give it the name my ACO1. Um, for the airframe file, you're going to go into examples. Easiest to just start with the Imram Light V2 example there. Sorry about this being filmed on a uh, cell phone camera at the moment. Um, choose that. Okay. Flight plan, let's just leave it. Flight plan's basic. Settings, we're going to leave it as fixed wing basic, which is the default. The radio, I've chosen T7 cap. And I also, if we go in here and edit it, added an eighth channel to the file. All I did was took the last channel and duplicated it and gave it a new name. So basically a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight channels now. I like to have eight. If you have a PPM encoder board, you have to have eight. So make sure you, even if you're using one channel, you gotta have eight in here because the signal that's combined and output from a PPM encoder is eight channels. So if your receiver only outputs seven channels or six channels, then leave only six or seven in here. But you got to have a one-to-one -one mapping of actual encoded channels on the output of the receiver so the autopilot can decode them correctly. And telemetry, fixed wing default, default fixed wing IMU 9K6. The way to select that is you just select it, like so. And there you go. Target's going to be autopilot AP and the session flight USB serial 57600 that's going to be the speed of the ground station modem that's going to talk to the aircraft uh, to set the speed of the aircraft modem you would do it by opening the XML file and you would find the telemetry area and basically, I'm using transparent. Okay. And you'll notice it doesn't say a speed in here. That's because the default is 57600. So if you're going to use the default, then you don't have to change anything there. That's just the way it is. So I'm going to click clean. It's going to clean up any previous files left out there. Click build. And now it's going to issue the make command. And... There's something behind the scenes, XML to C, which is reading those XML files that we had to the left there defined. And it's going to convert those into C directives. And there we go. So, I know it doesn't look like much, but we have successfully created the file that is going to be uploaded into the autopilot. So, that is the last line of it. So, now let's send it to the autopilot. So we're going to do that by, here's our Umarine, connected it there to the USB, and we've got a power connection to it, so it must be connected to USB before you turn on the power. So let's turn on the power, okay, giving it 12 volts there, it's using 0.04, and it should have been detected on the computer as a USB device. You want to take a look at that? You do on the Mac, it would be sudo dmsg. It's going to ask for my password, which I will feed it. Sorry, I should have queued that up. dmesg. And so if you look on here, Somewhere in here, it should have detected USB device. So I'm going to click Upload. And there you go, down at the bottom, it has just uploaded that file that we compiled into the autopilot. And now, if you go down here and you look, we've got blinky LEDs telling us that the code is executing. 
So it's that simple and that easy. Nothing to it. So now if we want to talk talk to it, we're going to disconnect it from USB. I'm going to connect in my USB to serial adapter here. I'm going to connect to the same UART that you would connect the XB modem. To see what that would be, you would go to the web page and look at the diagrams for that. It's the end connector. Right. Outer pin is TX, green one, RX, and the ground. And that goes to the opposite. So the middle, the yellow there is RX on this board that goes to the TX on the autopilot. It's crossed. Think of it like water flowing out of here and going into here. You couldn't send two positives to each other. They would just push against each other. That's how I like to think of it. Okay, so now we have the code running. We're talking to it with the serial. Basically it's going from USB, turned into serial, and now it's coming serial into the input of that. So I am going to execute. Um, I've got some warnings here. If you look at it, it's trying to tell me that there's airframes and aircraft defined that I don't have. I can ignore those. This one up here, I can't ignore. This is probably pretty good because now I can show you a pretty common thing is that my FTDI utility board probably was not recognized. So, there's two things I can do. You go in here and you look at this command line. I've defined my device with the dash D flag as dev slash dev slash TTY USB zero. This device that I plugged in is not recognized as that. It's recognized as something different. If we go here in the terminal and I'm going to type L S probably want a sudo. Sudo means run this as the root user. ls l for a long listing of slash dev slash tty star. It's going to show me all the tty devices. And in fact, I'm going to do time, order it by time, reverse. So order the files by time. In reverse order so the newest will be at the bottom and if we take a look there you see there's no TTY USB 0 but there is this second from the bottom is this guy that is my serial converter device so I'm going to create a sudo I have the command queued up actually through my command history. There we go. So this command, I don't want to pause this or something to soak it all in. Basically I remove the old one, symbolic link, and then the ampersand ampersand says if you're successful in doing that, then as root create a symbolic link from dev tty usb serial dash a 600 egev as a file dev tty usb 0 and as you can imagine that means that I will have a tty usb 0 at that point so I hit enter nothing should come back but what is nice is I now have a tty usb 0 as you can see right there the sim link about what six from the bottom there Okay. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say redo. Guess what? It worked. Okay. So over here, I'm going to say allow that. And I'm going to bring that over here so we can see it a little better. And it takes a second. And don't panic if something doesn't show up immediately in your GCS screen. So give it a second. However, it should come up in a second. So. What are we going to do? 
pretend it's a PC. Let's reboot. I'm gonna come down here, turn it off, turn it on. Okay, should have blinky lights. Good. Should be drawing about 0 0.03, 0 0.04. Come over here and should get something in the GCS. No, let's not panic. We'll just stop and remove everything and we'll click execute again. Let's move that back over to where we can see it. And there we go. So, probably this is a very good example just to show don't panic, don't assume it's blown up, don't redo the boot letter, don't redo everything, just, you know, assume everything might be working and go back and double check your steps. And if we look on here, you'll see the PFD. And look at that, it's moving. And the reason it's moving is because I'm moving the autopilot here. It's got a built in IMU. So there you go. That's your intro to programming and probably the most common errors and mistakes. Um, if we want a GPS on this, we connect to the GPS goes into the other UART right here. Now we have the GPS plugged in. I'm going to set it right here for now. Okay, the power draw goes up. It's 0.04. Got the GPS here. Appreciate that. Current draw should be higher. Often, well, we'll go do that in another session here. <laughs> I'm signing off for now.